uh, looking up to whoever was known for cooking up. You could be taken in, and you could be taken up. Stand firm like a man, never get shook enough. I swear you can make it, my nigga. Just look at us. What goes around comes around again. You know the same. Shout out to the Shake Squad, your boy Shake. Before we kick this video off. Why is it always nighttime when I spawn in? It's like consistently nighttime. What these all three of these guys got the LeBron James backpack. It's kind of fitting that we have the boot camp event going on right now because I wanted to discuss with you guys the very first build or new build that I would make for NBA 2K21. But I asked you guys a couple weeks ago what would be the first build that you would make for NBA 2K21 if the my player builder is relatively the same. And as you guys can see, I'm on my slashing playmaker. This build is probably the build that I feel the most confident with, or at least the build that I know for sure we could win more games with. This is what he looks like maxed out at a 99 overall, 99 speed, 99 acceleration, and he's six foot six. When NBA 2K21 comes out, this would probably be the very first build I make, mainly because I know for sure I can rep up extremely fast with a pure playmaker. Now, I'm not sure if the badges are going to be exactly the same, but I just feel like when you're starting a new 2K, you want to get the dribbles down, especially somebody like me, and I want to make sure that I get a chance to explore all the different types of animations, dribble animations, before I go next gen. Now this is a slashing playmaker, but it's the pure playmaker pie chart. Let me jump into the player creation and show you guys how I made them. Now once again, this is based on whether or not the My Player Builder is relatively the same, but I still feel more confident starting off with at least a slashing playmaker or something along those lines, so I can throw a lot of lobs to my teammates and rep up as fast as possible. We definitely wanna get that playmaker takeover though. Now this is how I made this build. He's got an 80.9 wingspan. I'd probably drop it all the way down so that way I could have the highest three-point rating possible. Definitely reduce his weight because you can't really tell. But then again, on next gen, this might play a big factor. And if the attribute bonuses still exist, when you hit 96 and above, so 96, 97, 98, 99, 99.9, I'm definitely gonna reduce his height to six foot five just so I can have a chance at getting the contact dunks. This doesn't really matter because things might change for the next 2K. We definitely want to go with speed and acceleration. And once again, we want to use the pure playmaker pie chart. So this is the build that I feel the most confident with, at least starting NBA 2K21. All of us are going to end up with like six or seven builds. Who knows how many we're going to max out. I'm definitely going to make my two-way slash and playmaker. Might make him a little bit different for 2K21. And for sure, I'm going to make my three-level score the slashing and sharpshooting pie chart as well. Now, once again, a lot of this is based on how I felt about that first trailer. Um, we saw what looks like the walking size ups or size up park dribbles might be back in the game. And I just have a lot more fun learning how to dribble, breaking ankles and doing things like that for you guys. And this build can shoot lights out if he's wide open, even after a crossover. People usually back off him when I'm in playmaking takeover. So it's a lot of fun to get ankle breakers and knock down jumpers but I think it's gonna be even greater to wrap up as fast as possible, tossing up lobs to my teammates. And if 2K listened to the community and brought back lobs off the backboard, you know, and just making it so we can connect on lobs more easily, Mike Wang did say that the game is meant to be more fun this time, so I'm hoping lobs are gonna be ridiculous, maybe even have some flashy lobs. That's enough of that, let's dive into some gameplay. So let me point out first that I'm wearing my University Gold Jordan 12s. Figured I bought them in real life, might as well wear them in game. Maybe I should start a series in 2K21 where I showcase my sneakers in real life and then I ball with them in game. Anyways, how many of you guys remember from like 2K17 to 2K19? Just laying up in bed all night long, kind of wondering what build you're gonna start the year off with. Like what build you're gonna make first. Cause you didn't want to make that mistake with 2K17 and 2K19. You didn't want to make the wrong build. I know I used to lose a lot of sleep because I didn't want to build the wrong archetype and have to start all over. That's a whole lot of wasted grind time. And look at this dude. You already know what time it is. He's on the ground. Ooh, and a and a fake poster on the big man. Telling both them dudes to sit your ass down. You know you can't stop the ankle, the ankle bully. bully. <laughs> That's why I gotta make my playmaker out the gate. 
uh, pure playmaker that is. I just have so much fun with this build. It's not about like I could go with a play shot. I know play shots can can shoot threes really easily. As I catch that right there, I thought he was gonna lob it to me. But it's all good. I get the corner shot to fall. Like I know a play shot can shoot better and dribble just as good, almost just as good. But I think that the real reason why I like the pure playmaker is because of the height. Like you can be six six, six seven, and still be able to shoot lights out. Cross anybody up, break ankles. It's like a super tall point guard. Like you really don't want to make a play shot that tall, because the smaller the better, really, with that build. But this build can shoot, and he can play defense with that extra height and that speed and acceleration makes up for his lack of defense for any reasons. Like there's times where I feel like he's just as good as a tall two-way because that extra speed and acceleration just makes up for it. So lateral quickness and just his ability to chase down people, you know, mainly because of that acceleration, it just allows him to be everywhere on defense. And then because he's a pure playmaker, you can make him with long arms. So he can be everywhere at all times playing the passing lane. So I have a lot of fun playing with this build. It's really my most confident build. And it's also the build that I think people fear the most too, especially when you have that playmaker takeover. People try to play off you. They don't realize how well this build can shoot. And it's obvious this build shoots even better than a two-way slashing playmaker. So as long as you make him with the right badges, he can do a lot of the same things your two-way can do. So I'm just having a lot of fun with this build. I strongly suggest that you come out the gate with the build you feel the most confident with. The build you know for sure you're gonna have the most fun with. Or at least the build that's gonna be able to do the animations that you want him to do. You know, like maybe you wanna be a big man and get rebounds and block shots. Some snatch blocks or something. Or maybe you wanna be a slasher, but just at least come out the gate with the build that you know you're gonna have the most fun with. And then that way you can kind of build off of that and kind of, you know, figure out what other builds you want to make down the road. Like, you don't want to try to be something you're not just because some other YouTuber's doing it. Like, you don't want to make the YouTuber's build. Unless, of course, he's making the same build you're making. You just want to make sure you're making your build the correct way or the best way possible. Like, that makes sense. Like, you don't want to make your first build what you assume the meta is going to be. Because you might end up making that build again, that same exact build. Because the meta changes every year. You don't know exactly what's going to be the cheese build. Check this out real quick. Oh, he got him with his half uh -huh. snatch back in the game. <laughs> Gotta show some love to Prodigy for getting an ankle breaker, even if it's the AI, because it's rare. We don't hardly see that often enough. But like I said, man, you don't know how the meta is gonna change. And the meta just means you don't know what the cheese is gonna be. So that's why for 2K20, I came out with a two-way to, to basically be able to shut down the meta. Oh, <laughs> Sit your ass down, Ray. I was looking for somebody to lob it to after that ankle breaker. I felt like I, I got the dunk last time. Please, let's go. let's go. I didn't sell the clip. Good thing Prodigy made that shot to finish it, but I, I wanted to lob it to somebody. <laughs> Nobody cut to the rim. The My Player Builder makes things a lot easier, especially if we get another demo and we get six builds to make. We should all know by the time of release what build we should be making. But just in case you don't, you can't go wrong with a two-way. At least then you'll be able to shut down the cheese. Dummies. It's your boy Shake. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. The very first thing I noticed was Damian Lillard doing a walking size up. We had these in NBA 2K19, and this one looks almost identical to the one I showed in my NBA 2K19 dribble tutorial with John Wall. And this is a really good sign because people really felt that the dribbling in 2K20 got boring really fast.